has institutions that have been corrupted by the city that aren't you know running the economy by and for the people but are running it by and for a tiny number of the financial and political elite etc and people you know and the eu as part of that frame makes sense you know people left the eu in anger against it but well, that's going to make things worse you know they they're dragging scotland out in this sort of absurd attempt to protest but whether you know some of the things they're protesting against were reasonable and so i think you can reach people with a sense of yes britain is in decline britain is a bizarre country which is lagging behind almost all of its regional neighbors in almost any measure whether it's wages or productivity or uh, even gdp now or a whole you know a whole range of, of social measures like child mortality rates for example you know, horrible stuff and by voting for independence you can vote to become a normal european country and normal european countries are much happier places to live britain is now on the way to become according to Oxfam, the most unequal country in the western world you know in order to be to have a much more thriving society we would just need to be a relatively normal european country and that case is even more true now britain is even more in decline than it was uh, it was always in decline anyway and and so i said my point is that you win the argument the same way as you won it before but the you know I don't, you don't, it's not that you shouldn't mention the eu in that conversation the eu is just another example of the decline of basket case britain and that is the case you know escaping that is the case for independence the last little point about that i mentioned earlier that we're suffering a lot of hysteria but also provocation and it's quite hard not to react to that provocation. And what's your thoughts on this? Because we're seeing it almost daily. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, people, uh, unionists, are angrier than they were before because they feel that they're losing or they might lose. You know, last time they were bragging and confident and, you know, they thought that this is all ridiculous and a joke and, you know, you're only going to get 30%. This time they understand that it might well be a yes for it next time. I, I don't mean that. You know, it necessarily will be. I think we, you know, it could go either way. But uh, although I think yes, it's more likely. And and yeah, as you say, I think you just need to treat them as squabbling children, and and you know, be kind, <laughs> kind, and understand the emotions that are driving them. You know, and think about you know people on social media. They like on Twitter, everything sounds very short because it's literally short. Sometimes these people are genuinely nasty and aggressive and those people there's not much point in engaging with them other people they sound to you like they're being aggressive and short because you maybe are wound up by other people and frustrated and it's easy to get back and it all escalates and i think you know just if you want to respond to them just take a breath like try and stay calm and just like reply rationally to the argument i don't mean i always get this right either but i think we all need to get good at that at never giving anyone an excuse to you know, write us off as the aggressors. Now, that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be conflict in politics. You know, there's been this whole, I think, slightly absurd attack on the idea of a second referendum saying, oh, it's just divisive. You know, I mean, what what's divisive in our society is politicians and newspapers picking on social groups on immigrants uh, and blaming them for the problems of the very rich and powerful. It's what's divisive is the fact that we have record inequality in this country literally pulling our society apart. What's divisive is the skivers versus drivers rhetoric used by both some bits of the Labour Party and the Tory Party to divide different kinds of claimants from our social security system. You know, that's what's divisive in our society. And yes, absolutely, at a time when a society has been divided like never before by politicians and by a, an economic system which is unable to bring us together of course when we have political debates in that context we find ourselves to be divided but it wasn't the debate that caused it wasn't democracy which caused the division the thing that caused the division was our disastrous economic system the sexism historically in our system the racism historically in our system and how politicians play on those three and tabloids play on those three in order to divide us and so the fact that they then dare <laughs> to call us divisive for wanting to oppose them is utterly astounding. And so I think, you know, we do also need to be robust in telling people no. You know, Ruth Davidson is supporting a policy which means my friends being deported from this country. And when I oppose her, she calls me divisive. How dare she? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's an excellent point on which to finish. Thanks very much for coming on, Adam. That's been great. Thanks for having me. 
So there you go, that was Adam. I hope you enjoyed that. We should have another podcast out during the week. And there's another two or three episodes in the pipeline just trying to put together a panel for a little discussion that we'd like to do in the next couple of weeks. So I'll keep you up to date with that. Regular listeners will know that one of the things on this show is that the first time you come on, you get to choose the song. So Adam chose this one, and it's actually his sister Sophie Ramsey singing a song from her album The Seas Between Us. Speak to you next time. Oh,